105 degrees a day, power outages today and all last week. I hope it comes to an end because this, re this heat is ridiculous right now. And it's even more ridiculous when you have no air conditioning. <laughs> last week we got up to, I think one day was 111 degrees. I mean, that was the actual temperature but to feel like the temperature was like 115 or something like that, 113, 115. And also the electricity went out and it was out for us for like 14, 15 hours at night. So like it'd go off, power went out around seven o'clock and didn't come back on until the next day around three. And it was it was it was horrendous. Kim hooping and hollering about we need to go to the hotel, and I'm like I ain't spending no money in no hotel. The local folks that that live here they've been dealing with it. Hey, we might well get used to it too. So we opened up all the windows, and I ain't gonna lie, he <laughs> barely made it through the first night, boy. I was almost caved, I almost folded, but. You know, about six in the morning, about five in the morning, I started to feel all right. It wasn't bad. The, ch the issue with me, of course, you know, she was like, oh, it's so hot, I can't breathe. And I had sleep apnea, so I sleep with a CPAP machine. And uh, so, so it, you know, I didn't get no sleep because if I don't have that machine, I don't, I don't, it's pointless going to sleep because I don't get no good quality rest at all. But about five, you know, five in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, they came on for about an hour or two. I was able to put my mask on and get some sleep. And like I said, that was the particular night. It was like 109 degrees that day. And so it was rough. So I'm telling y'all, and, 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 and Merida has experienced, and not just Merida, but Mexico overall, um, for whatever reason, these last couple of weeks, the heat wave has just been horrific. Um, Hold on, me dump this. It's been horrific. Um, has been, has it been terrible? You, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you don't get used to this now. I know we got solar. Somebody asked this the other day. I thought you had solar. Why does it matter? Well, it, 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 so I and I assume the same thing that with solar, even if the electricity go out, you still have some electricity well no that's not the case it only continues to run if you have backup batteries and from what i understand backup batteries cost more than the doggone solar panel system you know and from my understanding and I, somebody correct me if i'm wrong or whoever have more knowledge even with backup batteries if you kept everything running in your house like you do as normal it, it, don't, it don't even last long so at some point you still run out of juice the battery can't sustain um so you basically have to reduce everything that you're using to get more life out of the battery uh so that you can uh you know keep the house with some power or in this case some electricity and that and those air conditioning units man they suck up a lot of resources you know what i'm saying so just so you know, so solar, you could it only continues to run if you have a backup battery when when power goes out. So now there's some people that got setups where they're completely 100% off grid, and they have backup batteries or or electric generate or gas powered generators um, to keep the house running, keep power through the house during these outages. Um, but in this case, that's not the case. So from my understanding, the overwhelming majority of people do not have backup batteries. Uh, you're still connected to the, to the grid, you know, your panels bring in energy, depending on how much output or input it receives and output it goes, some of it goes back to the power company through their grid. You get credit. So that's why your bill is like zero. You have all this credit, this build up that you sold back to the power company and you get it back in the form of a credit and so it don't cost you anything um 
but like I say, so you still connected to the grid. You still connected to the grid and still reliant on the power company, still providing you with power. So when that power goes out, you you out. So now I've noticed some people here uh, in the neighborhood because our stuff went out for a few days back to back to back. So apparently uh, it wasn't because of, you know, living further out that we ran out of power or we live in Concow, uh, particularly in our neighborhood. Um, I think they said one of the transformers was damaged. And so it took them three days to fix it. They would leave with the, with the understanding that it was working. And then of course at seven, eight o'clock at night, it stopped working. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get over here. So, so half of our subdivision uh, the back half of our subdivision had power, whereas our front side of the subdivision had none. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, and, that, and that makes you matter because you seeing half your subdivision got power and then the other half don't. And then you go outside your community, outside your neighborhood, and all the businesses and everybody got power except you. And so, I don't know, man. It was rough. After three days of that, I was like, man, this is hot. After three days of that, I was like, man, I might have to break up out of here. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie to you, boy. But by day number three, you know, I had got used to the heat in the house and got used to the, the breeze that was coming in. And I was like, it really ain't that bad after day three. Your body adjusted a little bit. So I like, okay, I can see how these folks around here, how they get on without not having air conditioning. They doing some construction behind me, building a new house behind me. So y'all might hear a lot of noise. So it's uh so it's been it's been pretty wild out here, man. Uh like I say, there's gonna always be a reason to get frustrated, always gonna be a reason to leave. And like I say, how can you fix this? You know, we saw guys out there with uh, generators. And with these generators, it looked like some of them had rented some generators because when, when we drove around the neighborhood, we saw these big old giant generators out of people's houses in front of people's driveways. And they had these numbers on their phone numbers and something that said, rent me. So I guess folks will come to your house, plug you up, um, and these generators run by gas, and I guess you can run it for as long as you like, as long as you're willing to fit, continue to put gas in there and keep things running. So, um, well, some folks had that generator just running nonstop, which I get it. So, now I'm probably going to be, I only got a couple of more months left on my lease here. Hard to believe that time went by so fast. Uh, September 1st, I make my last rent payment on August 1st. That'd be the last payment I make for rent. Um, hard to believe that much time has gone by. But I'm th considering buying a generator. We still trying to figure out some travel plans or determine some things, so I'm not ready to make that investment yet. I think the worst of it is over. Had power outage last night. Uh, 105 yesterday, 103 I believe. Um, so that's why I'm back out here cleaning this pool because I'm about to jump in this bad boy. Um, you know, it's been kind of, whew, been rough. But I think a generator will help us in the event next time that power go down. We can at least keep air conditioning running in one room of the house and uh, and, and keep us moving keep us, go, you know, keep us comfortable versus not having air at all. So that's the one solution. Other solution, of course, when it's time to buy solar, I'm going to investigate into those backup batteries. So, you know, this is when you buy your own house or build your own house. Um, we're going to look at what options are available for backup batteries, find out the pros and cons. Cause again, if I'm only getting an hour or two of juice out of it, I ain't gonna waste my time on that. Generator might just be the way to go. And uh, cause I can get some gas. And 
Again, do more research about generators. I'm going to talk to Angel when I see him next time about that and find out exactly how the generator angle works out. So, so yeah, so it's been, it's been rough, man. It's been rough. Um, and, and, I, and I just want to tell y'all, uh, uh, this heat is real. It ain't no joke. I have to admit, this probably was the hottest year that I've been here. I've been here, this is our third year. This is the hottest. The first two years was a walk in the park compared to this year. And it, it ain't even over yet. We just getting started. So if heat, my advice, if you before you sell all your stuff and pack up, we're talking about you moving to Mexico, to Medida, come stay out here doing one of these during the summer and see if this is something you can handle. Now again, it's temporary. When I say temporary, a couple of months of this is what you can expect. Maybe not 109s all for the whole two months, but there are gonna be some, some, some weeks where it's just gonna be unbearably hot. And then regular hot might just be 103, 102, 101. Um, you know, so really think this through real good before you make permanent decisions um, about a life here because it can get pretty pretty doggone hot so I think this is one of those times where Kim was mad <laughs> just a mad fire hot mad and I'm like I just ain't spinning it dog I ain't spinning it I ain't spinning it on no hotel I'd rather use that money for something else and, and uh, you know, and so we made it. Kids, they were fine. Um, and, and that's what this pool is for. Jump in the water, cool off, go back inside and rest up. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, so but yeah, she ready to go somewhere else, cooler. Um, Better temperatures, of course, and uh, not so hot. You know, like I told her, I was like, look, every place got their issue. You leave this place, you might go to another place where you deal with, I don't know, crazy bugs and insects or mosquitoes is a problem or water shortage is a problem. There ain't no perfect place. It's just what can you tolerate? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, whew. Think again, I just want to warn you that heat ain't nothing to play with. If you got allergies, if you can't breathe, if if, if your stuff is triggered with heat, um, it may not be the place for you because it is extreme. There's nothing, there's nothing light about this heat, nothing at all. And I just want to continue to stress that. Don't let folk convince you that you can get used to it although you can um although you can but you need to be real with yourself because this is a different kind of hot this ain't no georgia hot this ain't no florida hot this a whole nother kind of hot you know what i'm saying and and humidity humidity is not so bad right now but when rainy season get here you know, you're going to feel that humidity. So, that's all I wanted to share with y'all. I'm about to go hop in this pool and uh, and enjoy myself. I might get the camera turned back on after I get in. Also, before I go, the other day I did some, I looked at a house over there in Concow that they have for sale. They, they starting to pre-sale and starting to build some property, some very nice deals, some affordable payment options for those of you that are looking for getting a beautiful home, new home, um, if you're interested. I'm gonna post a link in the description to go watch that video. Or well, better yet, I'm gonna post a link to the page where you can see more information. You can see the plans and, and stuff like that about the property that's available, how much everything costs. Um, there's some great deals. The price is right. 
And so take a look at that. If you're interested in it, talk to the the the, the, the agent and she can get you some more information. So moveabroadandthrive.com. Thanks for watching. Let me go get ready to get in this pool.